What's going on 5.9 Gamers? Joe Wags here bringing you another video on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel here over on 5.9 Gaming. 5.9 Gaming is your source for all things anime, gaming, and entertainment related, so be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things 5.9. Um, in this video, this is going to be a beginner's guide to Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and deck building. So one disclaimer I'm going to say is I'm taking this from the approach of not only just a new player to Master Duel, but just a new player to Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. So this is a very basic beginner's guide. Yu-Gi-Oh! is such a complex game, so many deck building theories and mechanics. I can't possibly go over that in one video. So I'm going to give you just some very generalized quick tips for new players and kind of just guide you as how to get into the game, what functions you can do in the game, and then how to start building your first deck. So... The first thing I'm going to go ahead and show you here is uh, when you start playing the game, they are going to give you a starter deck to play with. So my first recommendation is just start in solo mode. So if you click down here at the bottom, we'll go into solo mode and I'll just show you an example of what solo mode looks like. So in solo mode, you're only going to see one thing at the top. They'll give you a tutorial. Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel does a very good job of just kind of teaching you very slowly how to play the game. Uh, modern Yu-Gi-Oh! has a ton of mechanics, a ton of different ways to summon monsters and a like more different types of monsters coming out all the time like the extra deck i think right now is like five different types of monsters so it's it's a growing game and it's very complex and can be very overwhelming to a new player so my suggestion is is just take it slow learn the deck slowly build decks you like have fun with it and don't feel like you need to jump into online play right away i would kind of sit in solo mode learn the game start building decks and then slowly dive into the online play and then once again as you're first starting out don't expect to get up to platinum tier right away um, that stuff all comes with you just kind of learning the game and playing through, right? So if I just hop into a stage here, um, what's going to happen is so I'll just hop into this stage that I've already beaten. Um, what these stages are going to have is they're going to have a series of scenarios, practice, and then like regular duels. And then there's also going to be locked gates, okay? Um, the scenario will just be a quick story about lore of the characters and things like that. If you don't care, just skip that and you get free rewards. So that's fine, right? Then they'll have a practice match where they're going to give you a deck based on that theme. And then you are going to practice and they're going to just teach you a couple of quick combos with that deck. So it's just a good way to introduce you and kind of get you playing the game. Also through that, they're going to teach you some of the basic mechanics and how to play the game, right? Then you're going to have these matches that are called duels. Now, the big thing when you come into duels, you can actually beat them twice and get different rewards. So first, they're going to have an option for you to use a loner deck. So they will have basically a deck in the theme of that story that you're reading through right so you can go ahead and use the loner deck and you'll get rewards you can see mine here it's acquired but there this one would have had dark orbs okay um these orbs are actually kind of important you can get orbs of different elements as you play through and typically you get them for using the loner decks um these orbs are used to unlock gates which will access more duels for you and help get you more rewards so definitely like as you're playing through the game try to get the orbs as you're going through and then there's another tab here where you can play with a deck that you've made. The deck that you've made will come with different rewards. Sometimes it'll be something like this where it actually gives you like a set of cards. Sometimes it will be gems. Sometimes it'll be tickets. Um, it all just depends. But if, you, if you're a true completionist, um, you'd want to beat these duels with two different decks, the loner and then one of your own. Okay. Um, then you'll get these gates. So this is a gate up here that I've already unlocked, but you can see it was locked behind dark orbs. So I needed dark orbs to open this gate. Once you open the gate, then you get access to two more duels, which will have rewards. So this one had ticket rewards for summons and then more dark orbs um, and things like that. So that's my recommendation for just learning the game, kind of sit in solo mode, let the game teach you how to play. Uh, you're going to start learning about decks, right? And then you can start building from there. Um, like I said, you're going to get a starter deck at the beginning. So if you want to build that starter deck out and kind of add cards as you go through, um, things like that. Those are always things that you can do, right? Okay, so we've got that part of it. So that's basically the story mode in a nutshell, right? Now, um, in the bottom right, you'll see a dual button here. This is how you do online play. And sometimes there will be events. So right now there's an event going on where you're limited to what kind of decks you can run. Um, I wouldn't worry about this mode too early. Once you get comfortable with the game and you're like getting into a deck and you really like it, then sure, you definitely want to jump into online play because even if you don't rank really high, there are rewards here. So that is definitely something to look out for, okay? Um, next, let's go ahead and look at the shop so that you guys can figure out how to acquire cards um, and things like that. So there's actually multiple ways to acquire cards and I'm going to talk about that in deck building. 
Um, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel does some really awesome stuff to help you build decks very quickly that you like. So if I go into the shop mode here, there's going to be some normal packs that are always for sale. So at the top right here, you see I have two different packs to choose from. These are packs that are going to cycle. So right now they've got the Stalwart Force and this Revival of Legends. They will like eventually just cycle through and put different packs in there. The way Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel works is there are a ton of different packs that have different themes and they will actually tell you what's in there. So it's pretty easy to see if a pack has cards you want in it. Um, but here they just kind of cycle through them. But there's ways that you can always access any pack in the game. And we'll talk about that when I go into the actual deck building. Then they have this Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Pack. The Master Pack basically contains every card that exists in the game. Um, so the odds of you pulling the card you actually need are very low. So I usually wouldn't recommend pulling on this with gems. Um, but you can if you want to, if you just want like a random shot on anything. Like... If you need to pull on gems to get access to other packs, which I'll talk about later. Well, I guess I can talk about it now, but um, you might pull on it depending on if you really don't like the two featured packs here. So what happens is this middle tab here has something called secret packs. Secret packs are really the key to like building your best decks or like your theme decks like very quickly. Um, so secret packs, what happen is, is they appear and they can be triggered in two ways. You can trigger a secret pack by pulling a card of a certain type and i think it's got to be an sr or higher card so if you pull a sr or a ur of a card from a theme typically the pack that that card comes from will be revealed as a secret pack um, another way that you can get a secret pack to appear is if you craft a card that is a sr or ur i don't know i don't know for sure if it triggers every time but it, it will trigger uh periodically when you do that right um secret packs are only up for 24 hours and this is their way of like pressuring you into using gems they want you to like get a card for a set that you really want or for a deck you want and it's like all right this pack's available for 24 hours so i gotta like rush my gems into it right so a good strategy can be before you really want to dive in and build a deck you might want to save up like i don't know five six seven eight k gems like enough for a lot of multis maybe do one multi on a standard pack right um, hopefully, well, you wouldn't want to do that, but what you would do is, um, craft, like you have enough materials to craft one. So let's say I want to make a, I don't know, Madolce deck, right? Let's say I've got enough UR tokens and I'm going to talk about this in a minute. But let's say I get enough tokens to craft, uh, an ultra rare Madolce card. I might stockpile like five or six K gems before I do that. Craft the ultra rare Madolce card should unlock the Madolce pack. Then I can go in and do multis on that pack with all the gems I have. That's kind of the strategy you want to do when you're really like focused in on a deck, right? As a newer player, like don't worry about it too much, but just try to get a handle of the game, figure out a deck you want to build. And then the first time that you find something you like, um, then maybe focus on that deck and try to build it, right? Um, then they have bonus packs. This pack is what's always available with tickets. So tickets you can earn um, in a lot of ways throughout the game through missions, through doing the story mode. Uh, as rewards for doing the uh, online duels, like all different ty types of ways, right? So the legacy packs, you can get a lot of different cards on them. The only thing is, is um, you can't turn these cards into crafting ma into uh, yeah materials to craft, which we'll talk about that. So some cards you can turn into crafting materials, some you can't. These are considered like free pulls, so they don't want you to be able to craft with these cards, right? So that's kind of like how you pull on packs. There are also like structure decks you can buy, accessories, things like that. Um, the one thing to note is if you buy a structure deck, make sure that that's actually got a bunch of cards you actually want to use in it. Anything that comes out of a structure deck is not, you can't turn it into crafting materials. And like I said, I'll talk about crafting materials in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can't just buy one of these and expect to like sell everything and make crafting materials. So keep that in mind. Um, accessories, as a newer player, I really wouldn't use your gems on these. Um, these are more just like visual and aesthetic things. They're not really going to help your decks or anything like that. And then they'll have like some special things you can buy. Now, mine aren't on, uh, aren't locked because I've already purchased a bunch of stuff, but they'll have some. Oh, yeah, we can see them right here. So you can see these bundles here that I purchased. These are actually pretty high value. So as a new player, like especially picking up the Ash Blossom one on the right, Ash Blossom is a staple that is used in a lot of decks. That's actually a really good one to pick up and you're going to get a bunch of master packs. So um, I bought all these out. So like getting these are actually like really good for newer players. So if you have the gems to do it and you want to do it, those are actually really good pickup. Okay, so lastly, let's go into deck building. I'm going to give my general guide as to how to build uh, decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! and how to actually do it specifically within Master Duel, right? So I'm going to go to this deck page here 
and you can see that I have a bunch of decks already made, right? So let's say you wanna make a new deck. You're gonna click this plus here in the upper left and you have the option to create a new deck, uh, copy from a public deck or copy from a structure deck. So if there's like a structure deck in the game that you really like and you just wanna copy it and then build from it, you could do that. Um, a really good strategy for a newer player, if you are really sure, not sure like how to build a deck and things like that, but you know you like a theme, right? You could go into copy from public deck. So I'll just demo that first really quick. So if you go copy from public deck, you can literally just search any card name in the game, right? So for example, let's say I, I heard Medolce's are really fun. I want to make a Medolce deck. I don't really know how to build it. You could go in the search bar here and just type in Medolce. Okay. So if, whoop, if I spell it correctly, right? Medolce. Okay. So we'll do that. Okay. And then what's going to happen is a bunch of Medolce decks are going to pop up. Now, a disclaimer is there's no guarantee these are good or not, right? This is just a sampling of a, about a, what a bunch of people have made online, right? So you could click on one and depending on how well you know the deck, you're going to see whether it's good or not. So me here as a Medolce player kind of spitballing and looking at this, I would say this is a fairly decent build. Like this seems like it's an okay build for Medolce. It has all the core stuff you need in it, right? So what you could do is you could just copy the deck and then you would have that in there to work with and then you could kind of edit it from there. Um, another strategy you can do is you could go on YouTube and look up uh, deck builds for things. So for example, you could check out 5.9 Gaming. We have a bunch of deck builds on our channel. I in particular did do one for Medolce. So if you want to see my Medolce deck build and actually get my explanation as to the combos and how the cards work, go ahead and check out that video or any of the other videos, right? But those videos that we do on 5.9, they're really good because not only is it like, here's the deck list, but it actually explains how to do the combos and how to play the deck. So that's a great starting point for you as a newer player. If you just want to know, like, how do I run a deck? Uh, what are some of the text, some of the strategies, things like that, right? Okay, so that's one option, right? Now, let's say you're someone that, like, you really want to just kind of learn and figure it out for yourself. You don't want anybody telling you, like, what to put in your deck. You really like studying the cards and looking at it, right? I feel like this is a great way, especially as a newer player, to learn the game. It's just to kind of figure it out yourself. So then what you could do is you could hit the plus up here and you could just say, I want to make a new deck, right? So here's a really cool thing that you can do. Um, let's say you want to make a Medolce deck once again, right? So in the search bar, so this here on the side, it will literally have every card in the game that you can look at, even if you don't own it. So you can see the cards that are lit up, I own, but if they're not lit up, they exist in the game. I just don't own them yet, right? So let's say I just type in Medolce here. Okay, so you could do something like that. But... Boy, the double O's come in in clutch here, right? Okay, Medolce. Okay, so let's go ahead and search for Medolce. So now a bunch of Medolce cards come up, right? Now, let's say um, you want to know like what type of cards to use in a Medolce deck, right? So let's say I just pick one of these Medolce cards. Um, there's a button here I can click called Related Cards. So if I click that, it'll just show me all the cards related to Medolce, even if they maybe don't necessarily have Medolce in their name. Now, in this instance, they do because all the Medolce stuff pretty much does have it, but it's just showing me cards related to that. Um, as I go through, I could, um, oh, here, I got to actually take, yeah, take that out there. Um, so yeah, we could go there and it's showing me things related to it, right? So there I had my card on there. So let's do this. Let's say I'm going to type in Medolce again. So let's just do this, Medolce. Okay, so we're going to look that up. I'm going to click done. So let's say I start putting cards in my deck. To put cards in your deck, you can just click on them and you can do plus one. Um, and you can you can have up to three of the same card in a deck, right? So you can decide how many you want to do um, and kind of do that. So sure, let's throw a couple copies of those in my deck. So now over here, what I can do is I can close out my Medolce search. And then if I go over here and then I click related cards, um, it'll show cards related to Medolce and Jelly once again. So you could click on various Medolce cards over here, see what's related to it in case something else might show up that might be useful for the deck, right? That's just an option. Now, going back to putting Medolce in here again, sorry, I got to keep typing this in. There we go. Um, as you're looking through here, you can start building your deck and it's going to track how many cards you're using in your deck. So right now it's got two, right? So let's say there's a card that I don't have three of, but I want three of in the deck. So let's say I want this pudding sess and let's say I want three in the deck. Now you normally wouldn't want that, but you'll see it'll still build the deck for you. It's just the cards will be grayed out and you can still save the deck. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll build the deck how I actually want it to look, even if I don't have the cards and I'll save it. And then what I'll do is let's say I want to play with the deck just using cards I have and I want to kind of test it out. I'll just make a copy of that deck 
And then I'll just like in that copy, I'll just change cards around, like take out the ones I don't have, put in ones I do have and do kind of just like a, a pared down version of that deck that I can actually run. And then eventually I build up and I kind of get my deck going that I want, right? So what you can do in Master Duel that's really fun, that makes deck building easy, is you can craft cards. So I talked about this earlier when we we're talking about the shop. So let's say I want more copies of this pudding cess. So I can click on it and it has two options. It has dismantle and it has generate. So generate means I could spend SR tokens to actually just craft the card. I don't have to pull it from a pack or anything like that. So if you look at the top of my screen right now, um, there are four types of crafting materials. So we have N tokens, R tokens, SR tokens, and UR tokens. So cards in Master Duel have a rarity. So typically better cards are higher rarity and harder to get. Not always the case though. There are some very good cards like staples in some decks that are Ns and Rs. So Ns and Rs aren't necessarily bad. They're, and they're actually gonna be easy for you to obtain, right? Um, so if I wanted to craft something, so let me go ahead and pick something else here. So here, I'll just put some of these ends in my deck. So let's just uh, put those in my deck, right? So let's say I wanted more copies of my Dolce Waltz. I already have it maxed up, but let's say I wanted more. I could click this generate button. Um, so I'll do that and I'll click generate. So it subtracted 30 of my end tokens and then it crafted the card. When you craft a card too, you actually have a chance to get like a higher foil. So Master Duel does do like foilings on cards. Some people are really big on that. I honestly don't care. Like if I have the card, I have the card. I don't care if it's foil or not. In real life, that's a different story. I like to foil out my decks in real life, but on Master Duel, yeah, I don't really care. So that's basically how you craft a card. Now, the other thing you can do is you can dismantle cards. So what dismantling is, is you can sell cards to get tokens to craft other cards. So what happens is, is even if you're pulling on packs with stuff you don't need, every time you pull an SR or an Ultra Rare, like it's a W, because that's a card you can sell towards buying another one. Basically, the ratio is, is you sell off three cards of that rarity to get one craftable card of that same rarity. So if I wanted to craft a UR right now, I would have to sell three URs off. So the way that you dismantle is in the upper right. I click on this box in the upper right. One option is, is to dismantle all extra cards. What that is going to do is in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're only allowed to use three of the same card in a deck. So any card that you own more than three copies of, it'll just auto sell it. So I'll go ahead and do that. So here it's showing me I'm gonna get um, 580 R tokens and 320 N tokens. So I'll dismantle. And then those cards will leave my inventory. When you dismantle a card, you do lose it forever. So only dismantle cards that you for sure know you're never gonna use in a deck, right? Okay, so then let's say I want to dismantle SRs and URs because I wanna like start to make some of these cards, right? So I'm gonna go to dismantle selected cards and it's gonna show my whole box. Now, what I like to do is I like to sort by rarity. So when you sort, you can pick the sorting type and how you want to assemble it. So I'm sorting mine with the high rarity at the top. So I can just very quickly see like what my extra URs and SRs are that I can sell. I don't know that I have any extra URs right now. All these URs are for decks that I'm using. So I'm not actually gonna sell any, but maybe I'll have an SR that I can sell. Let me take a quick look here and see if there's an SR that I don't mind selling off. Um, we'll go here. I, I do pretty much keep up on my stuff. Actually, I think I see one that I could sell. Um, oh yeah, this, I don't, yeah, this Raid Raptor Phantom Claw, I don't really have a deck I'm using this, right? So what I can do is I can do plus one and it's gonna go to the side here on the left. So this is my dismantle pile. So what you do is you can just add a bunch of cards. So like, let's say over here, some of these R's, like, all right, dismantle that one. And I wanna dismantle this one, right? You can just dismantle them. And then they go over there, you press the dismantle button and you're gonna get the tokens back. So I'm gonna get 15 uh, SR tokens and I'm gonna get 25 R tokens, okay? So I'm gonna just dismantle and then those tokens come through, okay? So actually I got 15 SR tokens, so maybe I do get more than 10. It's the URs, I know you need three. So URs, maybe you only get 10, unless maybe they're doing an event right now, but I thought it was three for one, but SRs, maybe you don't, you'll, you get two for ones on those possibly, um, but there could be an event right now where I'm getting more when I trade in, I'm not sure. Um, but the bottom line is that's how you trade in. You basically build up tokens and then you buy whatever cards you want for your decks, right? Um, the other thing, like I said, that can happen is uh, when you craft URs, typically every time I craft a UR, typically it seems like I get a secret pack, right? Sometimes when you craft an SR, you'll get one. So um, I don't know. Let me see if there's an SR I actually want to craft. Um, all right. Well, I don't want to stay here forever, but for the sake of the video, I'll try to craft. I'll just craft another pudding sis. 
I don't need one, but I'll just craft one. So what you want to do is if you want to craft it, you click the generate button and then I'll ask you how many you want to make. So I'll just generate one of these. Okay. And I got a copy of it and look at that at the top, top here, we got the secret pack. So you'll see there's a glowing key at the top. That just tells me I unlocked a secret pack. And so because I made an SR Medolce, I've got a secret pack. Um, so yeah, we'll discard changes in return. Um, so I'm leaving my deck. But here now I've got a pack that's got Medolce stuff in it, right? So I can click featured cards and you'll see there's a bunch of Medolce stuff in here. So when you can, you want to pull for cards and packs because it's way cheaper to do that than to craft every single card, right? So when you can, you want to pull from the packs. So now I would be free to jump in here and start pulling for stuff. Now I'm going to show you another thing here. I'm going to go back to the homepage. I don't need any Medolce stuff because my deck is done, but I'm just going to show you another way you can unlock secret packs. I talked about this earlier. So um, I'm going to go into the master pack. Now, once again, I don't recommend the typical player do this, but um, I'm just going to look and maybe hit a Hail Mary on something that I need from a deck, but I'm not really sure what I want right now. So I'm just going to pull a master pack. And like I said, any SRs and URs, they're still good to pull, even if you're not going to use them. So I'm going to do a 10 pull and um, this will pop up and then we'll just, I'll skip the animation. So that glowing rainbow one in the upper right, that means I get a guaranteed UR and all the yellow ones are guaranteed SR or better. So I definitely got some good pulls here. The yellow ones can still have URs in them. It's just, that's what's guaranteed. So I'm just going to skip all the summons here. All right. So I pulled two URs. That's awesome. Now notice that popped up and it said, I found a secret pack. Now, because I pulled all this stuff, I've got all of these, look at all these secret packs I just got. So literally like for all the SRs and URs I pulled, I got a bunch of secret packs in here. So now let me just leave this page and let's go back into the shop. So here under secret pack, I've got all of these packs now. So your goal should be through crafting or maybe, yet yeah, you really don't wanna count on like pulling something cause you don't know what secret packs you're gonna get. But when you craft, you can control the secret packs. So the goal would be is to like have some crafting materials on hand. So at first you're just gonna have to pull on these random packs just to get cards and get crafting materials. But then I would save up some SR and UR tokens, make something for a deck you want, but go into it with a stash of gems. So now uh, let's say I had intentionally done that and I wanted, I don't know, something from this Wings of Darkness. Um, so yeah, Forbidden Droplets in here, great card, right? So now actually I need droplet. I'll, let's just do a multi on here on the spot because I actually need forbidden droplet. So sure, let's do a multi. Let's see if I can get forbidden droplet. But then you can jump in here with your gems. Hey, we got a UR, maybe it's droplet. Um, and let's see what we got. Okay, no droplet, but a couple of URs, right? So I'm not building six Sams. I can pitch this guy, get me some UR tokens. So just in this video here, I pulled four URs. So that's enough. I can craft any UR I want with that, which is really, really good, right? So even if I didn't pull what I want, I still got it. The other thing is this game doesn't give you any extra benefits of doing 10 pulls versus singles. So if you want to do singles, there's no benefit one way or the other to doing multis. So you don't have to save up for multis. You can just do singles if you want to. Okay. So back to deck building. One more thing I wanted to say on there and then we'll wrap up the video. I know the video is probably getting a little bit long. I don't want it to get too crazy long. So going back to deck building, we were in this position here where we were just making a deck on your own, right? And so what I was talking about in here is um, when you're building your own deck, you could just go in and you simply can click on the cards and read them. So I'll just do my Medolce example again. So let's just do Medolce. Um, Medolce should pop up. There we go. Okay, so let's say I'm doing Medolce. I don't really know what the cards do, right? So you can click on the card. You can read them. So if you're someone that really likes figuring things out, just read the cards kind of in your head, figure out what is good, what's not good, and start adding them into the deck, right? So I could take this. Let's just add some of these into the deck, whatever, and kind of keep going from there. Now, in terms of how to build a proper deck, okay, um, you can't use the same formula for every deck because decks operate very differently. But I'm going to give you just some basic ratios. So if you're a new player, the basic ratio I would give you is I would say go with about 18 to 20 monsters, but I would say about 18. To me, kind of the magic number is I usually try to be around 16 to 18 monsters and then like 22 to 24 spell and traps, but it depends on the deck. There are some decks that might run 30 monsters and only 10 spell or traps. It depends on how they operate, right? So just as a new player that wants some ratios, I mean, you could go 20-20, like 20 monsters and then 20 spell or traps. Um, 
that's one way you could do it. The extra deck has to be 15. So that's where your Synchro, Wixies, Fusions, those are all gonna go. Um, I'm not gonna explain how all that works in this video. Like I said, Yu-Gi-Oh is very complex. Um, so just let the tutorials guide you. They're gonna teach you how to do those summons, but you figure out what to put in there, right? So if I were just building a deck on the cuff, um, the other thing to avoid is don't put too many high level monsters that can't be special summoned. Um, Monsters that require tributes don't really do very well in today's game unless the deck is tribute focused. So if you're going to have decks that you have to like straight up tribute, kind of be wary of how many of those you're putting in, right? So typically you're doing a lot of four star and lower monsters, but once again, different decks have different things. There's some decks that are all like super high level, but they operate in ways that they work for the deck and you don't brick, right? So just as a general rule, I'd say go about 18 monsters, 22 spell and traps. You're going to have your side deck of 15, your extra deck of 15, things like that. Um, put in a lot of level four or lower. So if you're a newer player, once again, new to the game, do a lot of level four and lower, maybe a couple of high level monsters, unless you read them and they seem really easy to get out, right? So I might put in three of those. Let's put in three of those. This would be like after reading the cards, right? This one's a higher level. So let's just put one of those in because it's not an easy card to get out. Let's do like three of these, right? So just do that, build out your deck, and then you can see spell cards and trap cards We've got that as well. The other thing I should mention is you can filter. So if you specifically just want to look at um, spells or traps, you can search for that. So I only want to see traps and here's Madolce traps because I typed in Madolce, right? Maybe I only want to see Madolce spells. So here's all my Madolce spells. Um, keep in mind, there's a lot of spells that aren't Madolce that you would want to run in there. But as a starting point, I would just pick a theme kind of use cards from that theme. And then as you learn other cards, start building those into the deck. So anyways, guys, I hope this helps. It's just a basic beginner's guide to master duel. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd be happy to help you. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and we'll catch you all in the next one.